Welcome back to Bay Hill Studio. It's time for another vase pour. Again, I'm doing it on the, on the vinyl record. I just hate to waste all that paint, so why not pour it right onto a vinyl? Um, today I've got um, gold, yellow ochre, and a mixture of two different browns, some kind of coral. I don't know what it's called. These are all Amsterdam paints. Um, a yellow that I don't know what it's called, and a like a Kelly green color and a nice um, aqua blue, nice solid blue. So, and then I'm going to use some white as well. And I think I'm going to do, uh, I've been doing some, sorry for the reach there. I've been doing some um, strainer pours lately, and I think I'm going to do that again. I'm liking how it looks. So what I find that I like is pouring a little bit, layering the paint, and then turning it every now and then and um, seeing how it goes down the sides. So I think I'm going to do that again today. So I'm just sitting here staring at it, trying to plan out how I'm going to do this. I think I'll start with some white. I tend to like white as a nice base. So let's start with some white and uh, I'm going to give it some more. Let it start going. <clears throat> and um, these paints are not pouring paints. I actually mixed these up and I've tried this once before this combination and it worked nicely. So I'm hoping it'll work again. It's um, paint with like one to one ratio of paint and pouring medium. And then I add just a little bit of this um, golden GAC 800. And the reason why I'm trying this um, now is because I have had issues on the vinyl records with the paint. Um, crazing, you know, drying too fast on top and then that wet paint underneath and it creates uh, crevices and it's called crazing and I don't want that to happen. So I'm hoping that the GAC will 800 will slow down the drying time is that's what I'm aiming for. And then I did add a few drops of this Liquitex high gloss varnish and I don't even know why. I just thought that might be a nice thing to add, give it a little bit of higher gloss. So yeah, no idea why. We'll just see how that goes. Okay. I'm going to start layering a few paints in here and I've got to think about how I want this. I think I'll do some green first. Mix it. And with the strainer pour, you don't have to be really you know, pour it all over if you don't want. You can just pour it in different parts of the strainer. And I think I will add some of this yellow ochre. To it, just like that. And I'm trying this camera at a different angle. I hope it helps you kind of see a little bit what I'm doing up here and a little bit of what's happening down here. I'm going to try moving it back just a little bit. Oops, sorry about that. I think that's a little bit better. Okay. So here's what the strainer does. It kind of brings it down in these fingers and these streaks. And if you turn it, then you can see um, it will start just kind of twisting the design just a little bit. And um, so I just kind of twisted the gold and well, all the colors just a little bit and we'll just see how that works. All right, I am going to add some of this coral color. Right there. Okay, and then I think I'll do a little more white. 
just all around. And then I'm going to put in some brown. Okay, it's starting to really come over the sides. This side, not so much. Um, we need to get a little more happening. And I did check to make sure this was level, and it was. So I think I'm just going to focus some paint on this side. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we're getting a little bit more. And once it starts coming down, it'll really come down but you know what I'm going to add a little bit of white right here just to get it started there we go once it gets started it'll pull the rest of the paint down let me look around the other edges okay all right so it's it's moving now I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow Give it a little bit of gold. I don't like to do gold as much in the middle of the pour anymore because it just seems to disappear and it doesn't hold together as well as the other colors. And so I'm not sure if it's worth putting it in the middle of the pour, um, but I just did. So we'll see how that goes. All right, now I'm going to add a little blue. This is very different from all the other colors. So if I don't like it, I'll just go over it with something else. And then I'm going to turn just like that. Yeah, this gold is overtaking. So I'm going to put in some white. And I think I'm just going to start layering the colors just a little bit faster. Okay, I'm going to start helping the sides out a little bit. Got some kind of big sections that aren't really getting any paint, so I'm going to help it out. Just nudge some off the edge. And I'm going to keep going. Let's see. I want to wait and add yellow more towards the end. I do want more yellow in this. So we'll finish off that blue.
see, we'll do the yellow ochre, finish that off. As it pours down, I'm just kind of filling in the spots with my fingers and then it, it tends to just drag the paint that's pouring down along with it. So that's, that's working great. Let's see if I see any more. Yep, white hair. Okay. And all right, now I'm going to add some more brown. Okay. Um I think we need some white. Maybe a little bit of gold. Oh, that wasn't a little bit. <laughs> Jeez. So if you can see as I turn it, it just kind of changes the shape a little bit. And add some white where that gold is to help break that up just a little bit. scrape out the rest of the blue and add just a little bit more. Let's see, where do we want it? I was planning for this to be a mostly yellow pour to do something different, but I'll tell you what, I, I lean towards the blues. It's really trying to break out of my comfort zone. Let's see if I have any brown left. I really like the brown and that's a different color that I haven't done before. And I like the contrast that it's adding to this face. I give it a turn and by turning it it also kind of creates more movement when it's decided to stand still and I just helped by pushing some paint off the edge I don't want it all sitting at the bottom of the vase Okay, so what we have happening is I've got a lot of blue on this side and a lot of gold on this side. And then a streak of yellow over here. I think I'm going to throw in just whatever yellow I can to this side. And I'm going to leave the gold alone and not add any more. Okay, just got a little yellow off the edge. All 
I mean, I think it's kind of, I just, I, on all my pores, I tend to pour paint off, push paint off the edge. I don't want it all on the bottom of the base. And I actually like what happens when I do that. So I'm just going to keep doing that. I love this, what just happened with getting that yellow off the edge. This looks really good. Okay. Okay, so I am going to leave well enough alone at this point. And on this face, I am not going to use the um, culinary torch on the vase. On the past ones, I've thought I've liked it just fine, but I think it breaks up the gold just a little bit and I could be totally wrong, but it seems like it just fractures it just a little bit and I don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and let this drip for a couple minutes and then I'll, um, so that more color can go down right now. There's just a lot of white base on the record. And I want more color to drip down. So I'm going to give it a few minutes and then come back and do the record. Okay, so I've let it drip and um, I am going to take the strainer off. Look at the bottom. The bottom of the vase is usually one of my I wouldn't say one of my favorite parts, but I just, I love it just as much of, as the outside of the vase. It's the sides of the vase. It's so interesting. So now I'm going to carefully, I have this vase because of the shape of its opening. The only thing that I could fit it on was one of these um, containers that we get our orange juice in. So that's what I've got it on. I'm just going to carefully grab that container and lift it and just move it to the side and let that continue doing its thing. And now I'm going to move the camera straight overhead. So while it was dripping, um, I noticed that a lot of these sides weren't, didn't have paint, but a lot of paint had dripped down below. So what I did is I took this little tool and I just scraped it up like that and put it over the sides. Um, because having paint on all the sides helps with um, bringing the paint off of the record as I'm tipping it in different directions. So here we go. I'm going to tip it. And I'm going to do something different. <coughs> Usually when I tip the records, I start by tipping it towards the side that I don't like as much. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to torch it. Okay, but um, instead of tipping it towards, and this side is the side that I think I would normally tip towards maybe even this one, but instead I'm going to try tipping towards the side that I do like so that it kind of touches the edge. And then when I tip it back, it might stretch out. The design is what I'm hoping so that we have more of that color. So let me carefully lift this and tip and then bring it back to the center. And you, it stretched that out just a little bit. So now I'm going to go over here and just take it to the edge where I like what's going on and then bring it back to center. And on the bottom of this record, I, I put a piece of tape underneath under the opening where usually I don't. And, um, because I'm not sure if I'm going to make this one into a clock or not. Okay. So I think now I'll tip this way and back to center. We've got a lot of white going on right in the middle, which I don't love. It's just not very interesting. Um, so I'm going to bring it back this way a little bit more. 
So yeah, you can see the more that this goes to the edge, the more it stretches out. So I think we'll go back over here. Stretch that out. Get some of this white off. And then back to center. And that did break up a lot of the white. I'm gonna go back this way. Yeah, I lost a lot of that yellow ochre that I liked. Couldn't be helped. But it is making a cool design now. Um, so I think what I might want to try is um, spinning this. So I'm going to carefully lift this and put it on my spinner. And I have to do this carefully because I don't want paint to get all over the vase that I just did, which is sitting right here. So I'm not going to spin it fast. Just got way too much gold right here. Let's see if I can knock some off. Get back to center. And I'm going to spin again. Okay, the gold is breaking up a little bit, and I think I like that. It's, I'm not sure what's gonna happen when this dries with the white. It's not like the colors aren't clear. It's kind of a little muddy. I'm gonna try spinning it the other way. Yeah, I'm hoping, I'm gonna leave it, I think. Maybe I'll torch it one more time, but as it dries, I just don't like all these bits. It's like the white just completely came apart. Um, I do like the green through it though, and but the way it's just kind of milky throughout the gold, I'm not loving it. So hopefully it dries more interesting, and it might. See, as I'm torching the gold, this is what it does. It, it kind of pops all those air bubbles and breaks it up. And on the vase, I don't necessarily like that because it doesn't look intentional, but I actually like it on this.
Oh, that was too fast. <laughs> okay. I do like that better though. And I just, I don't know what to think about this either. This yellow part, it's just nothing seems really defined. So this might be a bust, but honestly, when I'm looking at it from above, kind of looks like kind of cool. It almost looks like the earth or something. So I don't know. Just play it by ear. See what happens. I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to leave this alone right now. I'm going to let it dry and um, come back. So with the vase, um, one thing is just to make sure that probably every 20 minutes you go through with some kind of tool like this or even a craft stick popsicle stick and just kind of scrape along that rim of the vase so that you don't end up with clear bumps from the paint dripping um, you don't want it to dry in a, a drip shape so uh, make sure you do that the record can be left well enough alone you can check for drips but yeah, I do see some because I was spinning it. So I will check that too. And just, so just take it like this and along the bottom scrape the paint drips off. And since I have this on a spinner, it's really easy to do. And I might only have to do this once with the record because there's no gravity pulling that paint down. Okay, I'm leaving it alone. I will be back. All right, so the vase is finished and I'm ready to show it to you. This was just a glass vase that I saw on my dad's uh, fireplace mantle and I know it was just, you know, a flower arrangement had been delivered and was in that for a while and he just didn't want to get rid of the vase. So I asked him if I could take it and turn it into a Father's Day gift for him. And he not only gave me this, but he gave me a few others that he had stored away that he just didn't want to throw out. And I'm so glad he did. I think this is my favorite pour that I've done so far. I am an avid hiker and this just has all of the woodsy forest vibes. It's got this mossy green. So that yellow, I used like bright yellows and it combined with the blue to create this just mossy, green that I don't even think I could replicate if I tried and this brown that has like this tree trunk I was nervous about using brown and I'm loving it and I love how it just played with the yellow ochre just beautifully so um let's come to the white I with the vinyl record I hated it the white on the record just broke up and it was just little tiny specks all over and it just did not look good and I still need to figure out what happened there. I'm kind of scared to use that white that I mixed up. I have some left over. I don't know if it was because the white was a different brand of paint than all the rest. All the rest was um, one brand of paint. It was Amsterdam and the white, I can't remember what brand it was, but it was a different brand. And so I'm not sure if that was it or if it that brand didn't agree well with the way that I mixed it up. So I'm going to have to figure that out and play with that, um, maybe on just some, some scratch paper and just do it like a fake pour and see if it, if it does the same thing on a flat surface or if, I, I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. Um, but um, yeah, I am loving this. So, and even the inside is just gorgeous. You can take a look at that. Um, gorgeous gold throughout the gold really comes out when you add resin to it. So there it is. I hope you enjoyed this and um, I hope that you'll follow along with me as we learn together about this fun art of acrylic pouring. Please like and subscribe and have a great day.